Hi, uh, my name is Kolya, and I'm going to be talking to you about um, running Joy on Kubernetes. So, uh, Kubernetes is a platform for running containers, um, very similarly to how uh, Docker lets you run containers locally on your local machine, um, except that Kubernetes in general runs multiple nodes, um, and so the containers can run on any of these nodes, and Kubernetes makes it easy for uh, containers to talk to each other. Uh, which is very convenient. So let, let's start with um, an example. Um, uh, oh, I forgot. Yeah. So uh, the, the other thing is, we're um, I'm going to be, ta be talking about Kubernetes cluster managers, which is a project I started working on uh, about nine months ago. Um, that lets you use uh, that lets you provision workers on a Kubernetes cluster and then use the distributed library to um, farm out um, the computation through them. So let's start with a, um, a bare bones example. That's not very convenient, but that um, gives you a sense for things. So uh, the main prerequisite for any of this to work is kubectl or kubectl, or however you say that. Um, uh, it needs to be configured to talk to your um, to your uh, cluster. Some of the commands like this one, the uh, kubectl run, uh, look like Docker commands. So this one looks like a Docker run command. Um, uh, here we're asking for a pod named Bear Julia. That's going to be interactive. It's going to be running uh, a stock Julia image straight from uh, Docker Hub. And we're giving it a service count so that uh, we can have permissions to do useful things. Um, usually most clusters are set up that way. So let's run this. And uh, very quickly we get a Julia uh, REPL, which is running on the cluster. But it is a bare bones Julia um, instance that has no dependencies installed. So if we want to do anything useful with it, uh, we're going to have to install everything ourselves. So um, here, the first thing we're going to install is Kubernetes cluster managers so that we can um, provision ourselves two workers. Um, so here we go. It's now um, waiting for the two workers to spin up. Here I can... Um, I can do a kubectl get pods uh, uh, with a watch so that every one second I'm going to get uh, an updated list of all of the pods that are running on uh, in, in my namespace. So the first one here is Bear Julia is the REPL itself and we now have two worker nodes. Okay, so these worker nodes uh, are uh, by default running the same image as the driver. That's that's the way Kubernetes cluster managers is set up. So if we want to do anything useful with them, uh, that requires a package we're going to have to install it ourselves. So that's what we do here. Um, we have to do using package again because uh, that hadn't been done on the two workers yet. And we can um, we can install the dependency that we need. So here, Figlet, which is a cute little library. Um, and we can use it, and uh, and get some work done. So here we're rendering uh, some fancy ASCII art. Um, what we are rendering uh, are the IDs of, of the worker nodes. Um, so here it's rendering the numbers 2 and 3 because of the, those are the two workers. If I run my ID here in the REPL, it gives me the number 1, which is the PID of the driver node. Um, always is the case. Um, all right, so in practice, um, usually we wouldn't start with a uh, bare bones Julia container. We would build our own with um, its you know, with our required dependencies in, in it. Um, so here's a here's a bare bones uh, Docker file for for doing that kind of thing. So here we're copying uh, some project files to a particular folder inside our Docker container. Uh, we're Julia building that and uh, setting the command to, to Julia, the default command to Julia. 
So building this is very fast. Um, it's almost instantaneous, and I'm not going to do it. But um, once, uh, if I do it with this particular command, it's both going to build it and push. And it knows where to push because the tag I give it is of this particular form. So it's a URL slash um, the name of the repository. So this is these are the coordinates of a um, uh, uh, container repository that the uh, cluster knows how to pull from. So it's configured to pull from. So once I've pushed, um, I can refer to that same uh, image with the same coordinates in inside my kubectl run command. Um, since I've already built, I, I can just run this. I had built previously. So there we go. I have a, a new um, REPL running. And this time it has um, it has my dependencies. And I can go about doing my, my work. Um, yeah, which I'm going to skip. So um, in practice, if you're um, uh, trying to write code uh, that's less trivial than this, um, the first thing you want to do is debug, right? Um, and you can imagine that uh, rebuilding a Docker container uh, or a Docker image every time you change your code is, is not going to work very well. So um, one thing that I would recommend for uh, development is to first not use the cluster and just use the distributed library locally. So. Um, once you've done using distributed and added some local processes, you can um, use revise everywhere because um, using distributed locally, both your driver and all your workers see the same file system. So if you change any of your source code, um, all your workers are seeing those changes and revise can do its work. So that that pr that makes for a, a nice way to debug until your um, your code is you feel is ready, and then you know you can go and, and Docker build and push it and run it on, on the cluster. Another tool that I've found very useful um, for doing uh, for working with the cluster is Dev Space Sync. So Dev Space Sync is a third party tool that lets you sync local folders with folders in the container. Um, and using this, well, you can once again use revise, but this time um, with uh, with things running on the cluster, not running locally. And I, I've played around with this and pushed the envelope a little bit, and you can get to the point pretty easily with these tools where just a bash script, uh, a single bash script that you run will get you a REPL that you can use revise in that has a REPL history that works between sessions and where you can even add uh, and change packages. Um, anyway, that was all very fun, but I have run out of time, so that's all folks. Thanks.